What's up, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Blood on the Razor Wire TV, where we bring it to you real and we bring it to you raw. Don't forget, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, share this video, and also it's important that you share yesterday's video. You know, when they four pointed that dude, I think it's important that that message gets out to the people, man. People need to see that. But I got a special guest on today, man, coming out of straight out of Maryland, spent a lot of time in that system over there. But you know what? I'm going to let you. I'm going to let you tell the people who you are, where you're from, and talk about how you ended up in prison, brother. Hey, what's going on, uh, Chad? My name's uh, Joe. I go by Farouk. I'm Muslim, which, you know, it, there's a misunderstanding that that's a, a, a black religion. You know what I mean? In, in the prison system, it goes that way, but it is what it is. But uh, I'm just from outside Baltimore, and uh, I came from, like, a good family. You know what I mean? Like, when I, like they, for real, there was no reason for me to end up in prison. My um, my family and shit. You know, I got like my 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 aunt. She uh, she's like high up in the NIH. Her husband's a, a private practitioner. I got a uh, uncle who he graduated from UNC Chapel Hill as a lawyer. You know what I mean? So I got family, and then I got another uncle. He worked for Shell, who's down in Houston. His wife just died. She had that um ALS. You know what I mean? But I had a real good family. There was no reason for me to be fucking up. And excuse my language. But uh, so I started getting high at a young age. And uh, being where I live at, I live like, you know, like 20 minutes from Baltimore City. And at the time, you know, they always called it the heroin capital world. You know what I mean? So I started sniffing dope at like 14. You know, when I hit high school. And then by that time, it just got to the point where I couldn't afford it no more. So I started shooting dope. And then from there, I mean, it was on a run. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? So. Off to the races after that, so to speak. I did, absolutely. Off to the races. You know what I mean? How old were you when you first started getting high? What age were you? Like, uh, I mean, I started smoking grass. Like, I hate to say it's like everybody else does, right? See, because my kid, my kid's 17, or going on 17, never smoked weed, right? But me, I, like I said, I started smoking weed when I, like, prior middle school, you know what I mean? Started eating acid, ecstasy. You know, it was always, let, let's move on to the next one. You know what I mean? The volumes. I never fucked Dr. Cotton because cause I was, you know, I, went to, I got I ended up on the heroin. Did you grow up in Baltimore? Uh... Like I said, I grew up outside, but at age 14, like, I t I'll give you the story, right? I, I remember one time I went with my older brother's friend and copped dope, right? Because I got tired of uh, the older kids burning me. You know what I mean? It was go take my money and burn me and shit. So I was like, man, fuck this. I'm going down. You know what I mean? And figure it out for myself, right? So I went down at 14, and uh, I went down Denison Street, which is, which is over there in Evanston Village, over on the west side. and uh, you know, I went down there because it was only like back and forth. You'd be back in an hour and change. You know what I mean? And you can go down. You can go down there and buy it. At that time, you know, there'd be like 30 different dudes swarming the car. You might have to buy 10 from this dude, 10 from this dude, 10 from this dude, just to keep dudes happy because they get mad that you ain't buying their dope. You know what I mean? They'll fuck around and punch you through the window just because they mad and shit. That's how many dope deals is out there. End up, you end up committing some crimes and you go to uh, prison over there in Maryland, right? Yeah. What do you end up going to prison for? Real shit. My first felony, <laughs> like in Maryland, when I was young, they, they changed the statutes, right? But when I was young, my first felony was a, a theft over 300. So if you caught three, over 300, that was a felony, you know? And it was for boosting. I, I, you know, I looked at all these dudes kept robbing. My homeboys were robbing shit. And they was catching big numbers. And they was fucking walking around, you know, walking away with like $200. You know, I can go boosting. Like, I can go to a Target or a Walmart, right? You know, like the lamps that they sell, the stand-up lamp. You go on the corner, take the motherfucker out. Excuse me, take it out. And then, you know, go and fill it full of DVDs. Because on Tuesdays when they drop, you know, the all new CDs and DVDs used to drop on Tuesday. So you get all the new joints, you fill the box up, 
close it back up and you pay for the land. You walk out the door, it, it might even go off. And you'd be like, oh, it's, you know what I mean? Whatever, right? So, you know, they come and check it. They're like, all right, don't worry about it. Have a good day. You got your receipt. You walk out. But you don't walk out with a couple thousand dollars worth of DVDs that they ain't see you put inside that box and the lamp's thrown somewhere behind the shelf. And then uh, I started stealing uh, electric trimmers, right? And uh, I, bought, I stole them faster than they could stock them. So then I ended up stealing vacuum cleaners. And that's how I caught my, my major case. I ended up eventually getting like 11 years off of it because uh, the vacuums are $800 a piece. And I'm looking, I'm like, man, I got to be able to, you know, get money off these motherfuckers, right? So I take them to the, uh, to the fence. See, I'm Lithuanian. And the, uh, the dude was Lithuanian. So he was cool with, you know what I mean, not taking my ID and shit. I pawned a few on record. One day we was dope sick. Well, let me tell you, before that, my homeboy said we was dope sick. He said, yo, my sister saved, saved money for me, right? Because he was trying to do good. He had a CDL or whatever. He said, I'm going to rob, I'm making it look, I, you know, someone robbed the house and took my money. I said, all right, whatever, right? And I'm standing in the house and not touching nothing. My dumb ass starts touching shit. And I'm like, fuck, I just touch it. I got to walk out. And it's like Christmas gifts and shit. And I got to walk out the house with the shit. Well, he didn't tell me he done cho- he stole his sister's chain like the week or two before. So they was already on him. So when they dusted for prints, they pressed charges on him for the burglary. So he had a warrant out. We're like, we ripping and running. He's scared to go in and steal vacuum clean. I'm like, dog, you just been riding in a car eating. You know what I mean? What the fuck? You know what I mean? I've been getting a hotel room. We You've been smoking. You've been getting high. You know what I mean? You got to go. It's time, you know, they, they know I've been in there every day, right? So, fucking, uh, I go in there and, uh, I bullshit. I say that a dude seen me from school and this, that, and the third. I was spooked, you know what I mean? So, I, I just got spooked like a motherfucker, right? I walk back to the car, tell him the shit. I say, look, I got a whole car full of vacuums. Just roll them bitches out the door like we've been doing, right? And, uh, he come in, he's like, oh, there's no way possible. I was like, look, I said, man, you're going to send me to prison today. It's exact words I said, right? And I went in there, and I'm going to roll him out the door. And it's this lady, and she got the kids on. You ever see the kids where they got them on the leash? She had like six kids on a fucking leash, right? And I got this car. And I'm like, man, I can't. Eat, eat. Look, I ain't, look, I, re- I, I was grimy back in the day, right? But I ain't gonna run over six kids, right? Like, I'm like, man, I wish this woman would hurry the fuck up, right? Like, please hurry the fuck up, right? So she get out the door. I'm gone. Next thing I know, my feet is all the way up in the air and do not drop me on my motherfucking head. And uh, so they bring me in the back and they handcuff me off crazy and shit, you know, like upside, of, you know, how they security guards fuck you up. And they chain me to this little thing right and uh their cameras are so good they can see all the way to the other shop instead they see my homeboy they call the the local police they pull him over bring him in the store they said he's he's his code of fan i said man i ain't never seen slim before he's like joe we're busted you know kind of like hey come out guys we're all we're all in trouble i'm like man i'm trying to cut slim loose right and uh so all they can charge me was with at now the felony went up to 500 so they could charge me with a vacuum I stole was $499. They can't charge you with tax. So I got a misdemeanor. But in my paperwork, it says, but he's also suspected of, you know, so many thefts. Bottom line being is he stole some shit to get out of it. He said, well, Joe pawned some shit for me. And that's how they pulled my pawn record. And they got all them vacuum cleaners. Push come to show, you know, I ended up, they gave me a drug court case. They gave me 15 suspended over with five with a consecutive 15 suspended. You know what I'm saying? Yo, you got to be the first guy that I've ever had on my show. Or maybe the first guy I ever talked to that went to prison for stealing vacuum cleaners, bro. They called me the Dyson, man. I swear to God. I swear to fucking God, yo. They called, look, the, this, they was like, yo, we got them. I was like, I was like, who the fuck they got? And the boss was like, he said, we got him, boss. We got him. 
right? You ever call him down or whoever, like the Dyson man. I'm like, who the fuck is the Dyson man? And this cocksucker had a, yo, he had a photo like this, man. I swear. It's a stainless vacuum cleaner, yo. So you end up going to prison, right? You yeah. walk in, you walk into the prison in Maryland, man. Are you still in that zone where you're getting high and you get the prison? Are you dope sick? Um, when I went to the county, well, my first, see, I had done a bit before that. Yeah, I was on parole, right? And I was only out 90 days, right? First bit I did, you know, I went to the county, dope sick. That was for boost, dumb shit, DVDs. But on this bit, when I caught the 11, you know, I went into county and uh, I was in drug, what they call, you know, drug court or whatever, right? So when I went fucking in, I was only, it took two weeks to give me the time and it made an example out of me because, you know, they have all the other kids in there. They're in there for like weed charges and stupid shit, right? But when they brought me in and they sentenced me and they, you know, they gave me the five, all these dudes, you know, they're all about to fall out and shit. Now I'm like, I'm actually I'm like, this sounds crazy as fuck. But my, my, my judge, my, my lawyer told me he's somewhere between seven and 10 figure, you know, you're going to get, you know what I mean? Figure, you, you know. So he gave me five on that. I did the five, came home, violated again. And then I ended up finishing that motherfucker brawl. You know what I mean? Yeah, I want to ask you about that prison system over there. That Maryland prison system is known for DMI and BGF. Were you around any of them dudes? They everywhere. All right, so when you get locked up in the prison system, um, yeah, out of my county, if you come out of like Harford County, we call it Hazard County because they, you know, they, they just, they don't give a fuck. They, they railroad motherfuckers out of it, right? But so Sunday night, you know, that's when you cast the chain, right? <clears throat> then you go to a uh, DOC, which is, uh, they call it Maryland Reception Diagnostics Classification Center. It almost looks like, um, like one of the, uh, you know the federal detention centers in Brooklyn? It almost looks just like that. Same type of design. And, you know, I could be in a cell with a year and a day, right? And you could have double life from 50. You understand what I'm saying? And we locked in 23 and 1 when I was there. I don't know how it worked now. And every other day you used to get a shower. If you got a shower, you got out in the morning, but you were locked in at night. If you got out at night, you didn't get a shower that day. And when I say get out, all you're doing is standing on a little chair. There's like a single TV. There's two phones you get five minutes on. There might be like one card you can play peanut on, and that's it. And then generally you stay be about two weeks. So I've seen some people be like 45 days. My situation was different because I had a new bit and a revocation. So the revocation, you know, you got to go two weeks. You go to your law hearing, then you go to your uh, revocation hearing. I was dope sick, just like you said, right? Because they snatched me off the street. I wrote my um, so I wanted to get to where the shit was at because I was sick. You know, I'm on it. You know what I mean? So I wrote the uh, case manager, and I said, send me to uh, send me straight to Justin. Like I'm gonna waive my law hearing, you know, because I already got I already got time to do. I'm trying to get my bit started. You know what I mean? But as far as like the gangs, they're everywhere. They're in every fucking jail. You know what I mean? But yeah, um, I ended up you know, when I got packed up after I sent that that uh, letter to Case Manager. They packed me up the next day. I went up and got packed up. That's where you find out where you're going. You can't use the phone. You can't do nothing. You just, you know, what I mean, you're locked in a cell. Or at that time, when I went up, you was in the gym. We was able to look at the TV, but you couldn't touch a phone or nothing. Because you can't call your people and say, hey, I'm going here. You know what I mean? Because you know why. The fuck. Yeah, I want to ask you about that prison system, though. You're, yeah. you're in that prison system, and you're Muslim, and, and I, I know your wife is black, right? Your wife's African-American. Yeah. Did the white dudes look at you different? Like, man, this dude, man, he's a Muslim, man, he's, you know, his I mean, wife's I'm black. In my face? Fuck no. I'm, you know what I mean? Flat out. I mean, and I'm not no... Badass, you know what I mean? Like, we got fucked up quite a few times, you know what I mean? Fighting, don't get fucked up. 
but to my face now. Now, I'm sure, you know what I mean, in the cell, you know, I, I, I'm a race trader, a fucking whatever, you, you know, you know how it goes. But there's not a whole lot of like, it, it's like New York probably, it's not a whole lot of racism. But at the same time, it's the fact that being Muslim, you know, you know, they're looking at it like it's a stigma. You know what I mean? Oh, you white. Nah, nah, nah fuck. Yeah, and, and, and at times I felt like just because of that, you know what I mean? Maybe I might have had to go extra hard and just, to, you know what I mean? Let these motherfuckers know. You know what I mean? What, what time it was. Well, I ask you that because, you know, I've been in prison. And usually when there's a white Muslim, you know, the white dudes are like, oh, he's scared. He's with them right. because he's a punk. You know, you get that flack. So I don't know how it is in Baltimore, but in the feds, I've seen that numerous times. That's why I'm asking you. Now, yeah, nah, like I said, you know, to your face, they ain't going to say that shit. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, uh, but like I like, I tell you one time, I was large, man. This is a black dude. You know what I mean? And and he hollered out. And what it was, right? The, man, we had two laundry machines. One of them was fucking broke down and shit, right? You get contracts with dudes, you know what I mean? Dudes want, you know, they'll pay you to fold their shit. You know what I mean? All, yeah. So, you know how prison works. Money runs the world. You know what I'm saying? And one dude got mad because he was a broke-ass dude. And he had nothing going on. You know, he was just a fuck. He was lame for real. He was, he was a, you know what I mean? He was an off-brand-ass dude. You know what I mean? And uh, he said, uh, I don't give a fuck about that Muslim shit. And you know what I mean? Right there off the muscle. Like, to me, that's like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you're saying that for a reason. So I was like, well, fuck it. You know what I mean? We can fuck the Muslim shit. And we, we just, and we went in the bathroom, which is the wrong place to fight because you always know in the bathrooms. You know how the showers always make the floor <laughs> fucking. We should have gone to the cell where, where, you know, at least you get a fucking grip in the floor and we get the rumbling and shit. But for the most part, not really like, it wasn't a whole lot of disrespect, you know what I mean, to my face at all. You know, I got one chip with, like you said, the DMIs, but it wasn't with the DMIs. It was a dude, he was like a hanger on, or, or he was walked in, or whatever the fuck, you know. And uh, him and I, we were ripping and running uptown, and we crossed paths. And uh, when we last seen each other, it didn't end, it didn't end good, right? So I knew it was going to be some shit. So, uh, I was walking in from, from the yard, and he was like, uh, you thought you wasn't going to run into me, did you? And I was like, dog, it is what it is, you know what I'm saying? Like, flat out, is what it is. How are you going to carry it? We carry it. And uh, I had to go tell, you know, because I'm technically in an organization, I got to tell my people, look, you know, I got to be for the dude, but it's from the street. Ain't got nothing to do with y'all. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, so I was going to try to see dude, you know what I mean? However he wanted to do it, we, you know what I mean? And the Iman was on my chair. He was a dude from PG County, right around D.C. And he was like, nah, fuck that. He said, and this was his exact words, right? He said, if them white boys want it, you know what I mean? We give it to them in this jail. We give them to the next jail. And we'll take it to the fucking jail after that. And before he finished that sentence, they knocked on the door. They're like, look, uh, whatever was happening, uh, you know, on the walk, you know, back from the yard that we ain't got nothing to do with that. He, you know, we just know, dude, he's from Essex, which is, you know, an area where a lot of white people live and a lot of them, damn, my dudes come from. Right. He was like, that shit's dead. Da, da, da. You know, it was caught kind of real quick. So, but like, yeah, I mean, it comes, but it is what it is. If, if, if you treated yourself and you believe in what you believe in, I don't give a fuck. Nobody thinks. You know what I mean? I hear you. Listen, what prisons were you at in Maryland? Uh, the Maryland House of Correction. That's that when when they packed me up for my revocation. They um sent me upstairs and they packed and I found out. Now I thought I was going to MCIJ. And they said, uh, you going to Maryland House, you going to MAC. I said, what the fuck is MAC? They were like, the Maryland House of Correction. You going to the cut. And, and you think the cuts because it, it's really because it's a train run back. That's why they call it the cut. But that was the map one of the maximum. That was one of the maximum security prisons at the time because they were building um, North Branch in uh, Cumberland. I've been in uh, MCIJ. 
I've been on the ECI compound. I've been to Brock Ridge. Where one I uh one I what's his name? One I mark. One I mark. One I mark. He he been at Brock Ridge. He said MCIJ. Remember what he was talking about the pit? Where you go down to that pit? I do I remember. Those, yeah, I was there. I was in F building. I slept to F West 240. I, I've been everywhere, Jessup. And everywhere in the city. I was in the penitentiary. And we got into it with uh another organization over there. And that's because, you know, disrespect. What happened? I mean, what was you about to say? Ask you what happened. I want to know what happened. What organization was it? It was it was the Bloods. And uh it's back in uh oh seven. What happened was Well, let me ask you this. So these two organizations, was it the Muslims against the Bloods? Yeah. And uh, what happened was, it, look, for example, if you go, we call it out back. Now it's, it, they call it JCI, and it used to be M MACX, right? That's where, if you get life in Maryland back then, you started, you know, out back. If you behave yourself, right, you might make it to the cut. Right. Like, so, for example, in that kitchen, you got three kitchens. Kitchen number one was like the Muslim kitchen, civilian kitchen. Two and three, like we call gangland. Now, if you're a gang member, you can eat in one because you can't say no. You know, you know what I mean? Because police really, if, if a kitchen's full, they're going to end up there. Right. But they can't be in there on that bullshit. You know what I mean? And for us the same thing like we can't go in two or three and be on no bullshit you understand what i'm saying like if we end up there eating there we eat get the fuck out of there you know what i mean so anyway we in the kitchen at, at, at the penitentiary to call mt it was mtc it used to be the maximum security facility but then they ended up making it a minimum you know minimum so dudes in the chow line and a group of them came through and they just fucking root in the line. You know what I mean? And they they bumped the they bumped the brother and he was like, yo, say excuse me next time. You know, he like, like he like you kind of get used to the fucking disrespect, you know what I mean? But goddamn, at least say excuse me, you know what I mean? So the brother felt some kind of way. He ain't even eat his food. I think that there was either water burgers, outposts, some nasty shit, like. Some some trash. It was a trash tray. You know what I mean? So he done sat that motherfucker on the table and he was just gritting on. You know what I mean? And when he went up, he he banged his shit out, threw it in the slot, went out the door. Well, they caught him in the steps. And uh they banked him. Yo got him stuck together. I guess a couple other brothers. Hold on, let me stop door. you. Let me stop you because there's people watching the show. And they don't know what that means when he banks them. What does he do? Does he stab them? Does he beat them up? What happens? They jump them? Yeah, they jump on them and stuff. You know what I mean? They, 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 cause they weren't looking for no trouble. They was just being knuckleheads. You know what I mean? It wasn't like they was walking around strapped. You know what I mean? They was just being fucking knuckleheads. And, you know, they felt some type of way that he said something to them like, who the fuck's this? You know what I mean? Because, you know, you don't know who, every Muslim don't wear a kuf, you know what I mean? You you, you don't know who who's who, you know what I mean? Sometimes with Muslim, like, we know who's Muslim, you know what I mean? But for, like, and what I always learned was in the joint was learn your enemy, you know what I mean? Always learn your fucking enemy, you know what I mean? Like, and not necessarily enemy or whoever, you know, you understand what I'm saying? Figure out who's who. Know what the fuck I'm all around. You want to always know your awareness, man. You want to be aware of everything around you. I'm like that now, from prison and, you know, I carry that into the street. You, Of course, you want to know who you're around, what's going on. You want to be aware. Are the Muslims strong in that Maryland prison system? Look, I say it like this, right? We don't run shit because I say it like this, right? We don't. We 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 technically don't break law. You know what I mean? Like, but but you know how that goes, right? 
And I'm not going to fucking put a bone on any Muslim who break law or whatever, but I'm saying, you know, that there's other organizations that, that really break law and run a lot of the underground shit. You understand what I'm saying? Now, as far as that's concerned, no. Now, as far as there's like like the whole time I'm I talking about I'm, listen, Joe, this is what I'm talking about, right? What? I'm talking about are they strong? If there's a beef, are they going hard? Are no, they pass, stabbing? Are they fighting flat back? The flat the fuck out. Flat the fuck out. And no people, hold on. Do other people like DMI and BGF and the Bloods, do they respect the Muslim community? Yeah. And I'm going to tell you, there's a, I'm going to tell you another thing. There's a, there's a lot of them that Muslim. But that's the thing. Like, And, and I'll get that, but let me finish about what happened, right? All right, so they banked the dude. That was on a Wednesday. Class was Thursday. We talked about it. We said, look, we're going to go to Juma, which is on Friday. Juma translates into Friday, which is our day of prayer, right? That was an A building, which is right there on the yard, but it's a separate building, right, by the powerhouse. And then when we were done at that time, you could go and boom, and go right into the yard. So we went in there, we prayed. And we had, they started handing, like I told you, started handing out knives. You know, some handmade locks, some dudes brought locks, whatever the fuck. But the vast majority of them flip outs. Because, like I said, you know, and when you get to the city, every organization got a cop. You know what I mean? So, <clears throat> you know, we, we go and they have positioned themselves in the corner of the yard. They got, you know, the 40, 30, 40, whatever the fuck they are, you know, concrete walls, and there's a chain link fence. They were right in the corner. There's another organization so next to them. Then there was the uh the pack, the blister pack I told you about, right? And when we came when when we came out the building, we were probably like 300 deep, like real shit. And we we went up. We we went, you know, both sides of the of, of the yard, and then down the middle, and met them right them at their at their at their face, right. And they were like, "Look, give us the four or five that banked our dudes. We don't want. Just give us the fucking dudes who banked our dudes. We already got it set up. We can go behind a building. We can avoid a whole mess. Get this shit squashed right now." <clears throat> One dude pulled out a knife. Another dude said, nah, fuck that. Now, my man, I, this dude, he, dude passed away. He, got, he, he just overdosed. But this dude, the uh, Abdul Jabal, man, dude said, fuck that. He just took off on him. And then the shit just turned into a dust cloud. You know what I mean? The, you know, everybody already knew shit was about to hit the fan. So they was out the way. The police ran. They locked the gate. There was dudes climbing the fence into the razor wire. There was dudes stripping their, you know, their uh, their bands off their arm. It was overkill. I'm not even gonna lie. Like, you know, like there was so many of us, and the, a lot. There was a couple that went dead hard. I'm not even gonna lie. Like they fucking fuck, few of them fucking fuck. You know what I mean? Don't get it fucked up. Like just because they was outnumbered, a few of them motherfuckers went. But you know. At the end, how many bloods was there? There's 300 of you and how many bloods? Man, if it was 50, that's giving that's giving them a few. You know what they I mean? Cop deuces, they went hard, but it didn't work out for them. They didn't. They didn't know what to do. You, you know what I mean? Like they they should have just. They said we're not giving up none of our men. Right? They they should have just let the four go fight. You know what I'm saying? Like, real shit. And I say 90% of the Muslims that got hurt in, 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 the, in, in, in the situation was friendly fire. And what I say by that was, you know, instead of like, heave ho, heave ho, you know, motherfuckers would just steady trying to chop. You know, let's say a dude fell on the volleyball court and they all jumped on him and they stabbed him. They end up fuck around, you know, they ain't no fucking stabbing each other in the arms and shit. And it was just a fucking. They found. They, they said they found some shit like over 100 knives on the yard that day. Sometimes things get real. You know, I've read stuff about that Maryland 
um, Department of Corrections, right? I know they had staff members over there that were doing things for green dots, things like that. I remember yeah, reading something put, where didn't one of the BGF dudes ended up getting one of the staff members pregnant and he was on nah, death row? Four, four of them. He got four of them pregnant. And then testified against all of them. Ain't that something? What about the green dots? Weren't they doing stuff for green dots? Yeah, they they were selling pussy like the kitchen workers. The kitchen work like one hundred fifty hours get get you. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah I want to. Hey, let's not let's let's just say different. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You know, one hundred fifty hours. Look, I tell you, look, I slept in two twenty seven. I had to put like and 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 and, and that was the last cell right on the second tier two twenty seven right, and then the police can walk you know around and there's a stairwell back there that we have no access to. And then they go on to like you know uh, street side, right? So the police, the police that was selling, they take them back there in that stairwell. I had to put shit up on the wall, right? Because they got little like you know like peep holes and shit. You know what I mean? Like little little drills. I don't know what the holes were for. Like in this, look, because I hear shit. I'm like, what the fuck? You know, you look. And you're like, what the, you sir, you know, you see a, a CO bent over and shit, but I ain't trying to see, you know what I mean, Slim run up in him. You know what I mean? So I had to keep putting stuff over the wall and shit. Here, you remind me of one of my cellies, man. I had a cellie, a white dude from D.C. named Tim Tim, man. He was a little fella, but good dude, man. He was a white dude from D.C., funny dude. You remind me a lot of him. I, uh, how long has it been since you got high, man? Look. Uh, it, this what happened, right? I came home in uh, 2000 shit. Me and my wife's anniversary 11. Now, she gonna kill me on this one when she see this. I came home in uh, July 2010. Right? And uh, I came home. I got high for a couple months, right? And, and the shit was trash. I ain't gonna lie. Like, the shit in jail was better. Right? And, uh, my mother said to me, she was like, it's when she still lived in Maryland. She said, uh, is there something you need to tell me? You know what I mean? Like, cause, cause what happened was I wasn't supposed to go even go. I had called on, on the jack, right. You know, on, on the cell phone. And I was like, look, they let me out tomorrow. Uh, it's going to be like eight o'clock or whatever, but I'm just letting you know I'm getting out. Right. And so. I was waiting for the gate money, little $50 they give you. I was going to go down the block, get a chick, you know what I mean? Do something, you know what I mean? Do something strange, just change. And then I was going to go ahead and, you know what I mean, get high or whatever. My brother was there. I was out of my office, the fuck? He was like, he got scared. It, 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 the projects literally were right out of jail where I got released from. That's where the projects are. This scared ass took it all the way down the block. But then he saw some people walking out the back of the uh, jail and he came, he's like, and he scooped me up. But uh, I came home, I got high for a couple weeks and my mother's like, is there something you need to tell me? Cause she let me live with her. And I was like, don't, I said, look, don't worry about it. You know what I mean? I already got, I, don't know, I went and got the program. So, you know, I've been on a program ever since. And a uh, dude's like, I'm gonna be honest with you. Like, I, like, I wanna get off it. You know what I mean? I've been on Macedon now, like, since then. So that's going on, like, 12 years, right? But, you know, I'm not, like, running over top old ladies and blockbusters and shit, going out, out the door. I did some crud ball shit, though. Like, real fucked up shit. Man, addiction's a real thing, bro. You know what I mean? My father went through it, and my father ended up dying. He was he was a dope fiend, man. He used to get high. Um, But you work a job now. You're married. You got kids, right? Yeah. How's that feel, man? How's it feel to wake up every morning and put them work boots on and go to work, brother? Yeah, I mean, I love, I love, I love working. I mean, but them little, them kids expensive as shit. The wife, say, does the wife take that paycheck, man? That's what the people want to know. Get flat out. Like, would you want me to lie about it? Oh, I want you to tell the truth, but you know what, man? It's better that she takes the paycheck, right? And yeah, you're doing the right thing on. than sitting in prison. On. Right, or go up my arm. One hundred percent. And them kids need a father, man. You know what I mean? And it's hard to be a father from prison, bro. My son, uh, my oldest son, he um, they don't got that uh, 
that uh, what they call ROTC. They don't got that, but he um he he'll, he he turned 17 August 1st, and he signed in. And he's going with the Air Force. He's trying. He's gonna be a. He's trying to be a PJ. That's for sure. The email. And uh, they they the dudes that when you get blown up on a battlefield, that that you want to be. They the, they the ones you want to see, and they pull up. They pull. You know what I mean? And they they scrape your ass up off the ground, and they got that uh the gold now or whatever, and within an hour they supposed to have you on a surge, surgery table. And that's what he, that's what he's gonna do. So. Well, he's doing the right thing in life, man. You did something right, obviously, right? Look, man. I told him. I said, look. I said, you know, clearly I'm white. You know, I, I got, I got, you know, I was young and dumb. I got white trash tattooed on my arms, right? And uh, I said, look, let me tell you something. <laughs> that I'll show you, right? Like, real shit. But look, I said, uh, you know, they cut my white card up a long time ago, right? I said, and uh. Don't get it fucked up just because you half white. That don't mean shit. You you a black man, and, and look what they're doing to these these black men. That 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 they slaughter them in the street. Look at in you know whether whether it be you know in the street or the police, you know, or, or like them them assholes in Georgia. You know what I mean? Like I said. Oh, bro, fuck. we might have to cut that part out. I know it's real and it's raw, but damn, bro. I was the wrong one. Holy shit. But anyway, uh, I told him, I was like, look, uh, you know, you ain't built, you ain't built for this shit. I said, look, I already know because I've been I've been back in jail a couple of times. I'm not gonna lie, right? You know, because <clears throat> the rent gotta get paid, right? And uh I made a couple dumb decisions, right? And uh, I thought I could go back one time and, uh, you know, back to my old career, right? And look, I stole, check this shit out. I stole some golf clubs. These motherfuckers were uh, tailor-made. These bitches had compasses on them. These motherfuckers were like worth like $1,000 each, right? I stuck. I, I walked out the first time, right? <clears throat> Down my pant leg. I'm, I'm limping out this bitch like I got a broken leg, right? Hop on the train, take them down, sell them at the at the, at, the, at the pawn shop. Well, my dumb ass, right? I'm trying to look so much like a customer. You know that? You ever been? You ever been like a sport good store? They got that that fake, uh, you know, like almost like we could swing the golf club and, and hit the ball, shit. Yeah, they got that. Right. They got that in my city at Dick Sporting Goods. I know what you're talking about. Right. All right. So for some reason, I had my medication with. me. I set it down on the thing, right? I go over there, swing, boom. They didn't know I stole the first nine. My greedy ass went back for more. So I grabbed another, like, nah. And uh, so I get on a train. We rolling, we rolling. I'm talking to my homeboy. Everything's cool. I got these things sitting right next to me on the train. Had to pop all the security things off of them. Threw them somewhere I thought was cool. You know what I mean? All that shit. Get the next stop, it just stop. Oh, what the fuck? Next thing there's like four or five of the train police. Like, you know, like, you know how like they got New York, they got, you know, like the transit police. They're like, you, come with me. What the fuck you want me for? And I got nine golf clubs. Sitting. Who the fuck got nine golf clubs, no golf bag, and all drivers, right? And they pulled me off, right? They fucked me up. They bring me back. They got my medication. They're like, get this scumbag the fuck out of here, right? So uh, they take me to the, the to the courthouse, and I'm calling my man. He's a bail bondsman. He said, look, man, anything under 100000 I got you. I pull you. You know what I mean? We'll work it out. He's like, he's like a brother to me, right? Oh, my God. So I call him. I'm like, yo, I need you to pull me. Mole, you going to fuck wild me the fuck out. This, that, and the third, right? I go and I see the commissioner. She released me on my OR. I said, what the fuck? Even I'm like, what the fuck? I'm thinking at least, I'm, you know, 5000 or something, right? She's like, yeah, well, Merry Christmas. Shit changed in this state a little bit. He's like, you know, and let cut me loose, right? Now I got to call my old lady. Like, look, I got locked up. Uh, and I make up some bullshit story. And I ran on it for a while. I ran on, ran on, ran on. 
<clears throat> I go to court finally. My, when my son was born at 14, I ran, made sure he was seeing him born. Because, I, you know, my first son ain't really mine, but I raised him since he was five. But this one, I ain't, I wanted to see born. So he was born on the 14th of November. I turned myself in. I tried to turn myself in December 2nd. I go to the jail. I'm, I'm all fucked up. I got a bunch of contraband, right? I'm like, yo, bump, 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 banging on the window and shit. And they're like, uh, what the fuck you want us to do? I'm like, I got a warrant. What the fuck you telling us for? You know what I mean? They look me like I'm crazy. I'm like, lock me up. Yeah, I, I made sure I got good and drunk. I'm just, you know, because you know how hard it is to turn yourself in? I can only imagine. Right. And I'm like, yo, lock me up, please. They're like, make the fuck out of here. I'm like, what are you going to do? Call the cops? Get me locked up? They're like, yo, get the fuck out of here, right? So I left. So I spent another three days out in the street. And I finally just, I went to CBS. I said, look, call the cops and tell them I'm here. She's like, for what? I said, tell them I'm here. And she's like, all right. She called the cops. She's like, I got a guy here saying he's here waiting on him. And uh, they still don't come for a while. I'm like, what the fuck? I walk out the parking lot. And I get to, like, there's a gas station next door. They're finally like, you, you, you're the asshole call, ain't you, right? And I look. And I'm like, nah, now I'm trying to change my mind and shit. I'm like, nah, who, who the fuck you talking about? Nah. They're like, nah, we know it's you. Come in. And they, they finally grabbed my name. They locked me up. And so I went and I sat, like, like six months, blue trial, right? Was going to blow trial. I had a pu public defender. Man, this woman, man, they came, she came to me. They were like, look, they're offering you 10 years. I said, it only carries 10 years. And then she handed me that subsequent offender, pop, pop, you know, paperwork. And uh, she was like, nah. She was like, uh, if we blow trial, you fuck around and lose, you get 30 years. Because you get three times, you understand what I'm saying? You get three times the amount of time what it carries if you blow trial and lose. So... <clears throat> I'm like, look, I ain't blowing trial. So she keep coming back with these bullshit pleas. She's like, no, nah, I could beat this. I could beat this. I could beat this. And this is the public defender. I'm like, man, what the fuck? Hell no. She finally came back with one last plea. She was like, look, they got knocked it down to a misdemeanor. Time served, right? All this bullshit because the cops had retired. They didn't have no witnesses because I had ran on them for so long. She was like, I, I could take it to trial right now. And you... I'm like, look, man, if I, if I fuck around and go to trial and somehow lose, fuck, fuck around, my old lady's going to figure out a way to get in jail, kill. You know what I mean? Like, I got to take this shit. You know what I mean? So I took it. It was a couple months probation, but they started it from the time I was in jail. They do that in Maryland, too. You know that, right? Now, yeah, I don't know how they do it. Like, let's say you in New York, right? Listen, you man, get, uh, they, they do that in all places almost. Now? Yeah. She's, I didn't know that shit. She, it's not, you know what I mean? This, I, this happened at 14. How much time do you end up getting? You cop out the misdemeanor. How much time do you get? I sat in jail on that six months. They gave me time served. They gave me three years suspended. But they gave me a year probation. But they backdated the probation for the day I walked into jail. So if I was to have fucked somebody up in the jail, caught a charge, it violate the probation plus the new charge. You understand what I'm saying? I understand. So look, at the end of the day, man, you're out of jail, man. You're living a better life. You're okay. on the methadone program, but you're not out ripping, running in the streets. You're not robbing. You're home with your wife tonight. You're raising your family, man. So you're living your best life now, right? Living a lot better life than in prison, right? Oh, I was going to say, what the hell is his name? Uh, little, uh, little, little Duval. Living your best life. Yeah, I heard. I, I was listening to one of your videos at work the other night. And he was like, I can't remember who sung that song. Little Duval. Living your best life. Yeah, that's it. You're living your best life, man. Look, we've been on here a while, man. I'm going to get ready to close the show, right? You got, a la yeah. you got anything you want to say before we go, man? Look, man. These kids fuck with that fentanyl, leave that shit alone, man. Leave that shit alone because, you know, look, 
I ain't no gun, dude. I ain't break. You know what I mean? I'm not running around with no gun around, fuck around, doing no crazy shit. But leave them drugs alone, because you know you, you think you, you everything's 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 everything, but you gonna get around some real gangsters who about that life. You know what I mean? And guess what? One day your car's gonna get pulled. You know what I mean? Because you can't do time without your car getting pulled. I don't give a fuck who you are. No doubt. I hear you, man. Look, I'm going to close this show, man. I appreciate you coming on, Joe, sharing your stories, sharing your experiences. You know, let you know. I hope that people listen to that message, man. And too many kids out here, too many young people, too many people caught up in the game. Fentanyl will kill you. So look, man, hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Blood on the Razor Wire TV. With respect, until tomorrow, we're out. Thank mm -hmm. you.